It's late December. Normally we would not be checking colonies for weight at this time of year. We had an unusually warm fall and we have an unusually warm week ahead of us. Highs are going to be in the mid-60s, so we're going to take this opportunity to check out our overwintering nukes and even the singles down below, make sure they're doing okay on food. One of the problems with singles in our areas is that they can run out of food in late winter. And uh, oddly enough, with warm weather, the bees tend to use more food than they do in cold. So with all this warm weather, we feel like we really need to check things out, see how the food stores are doing. So we're checking out brood nests to see what they're up to. And the bees are brooding up a little bit, running a little bit early. Um, this, that's what happens with this warm weather. See that bomb in the frame there too. And once they start rearing brood, they really start going through the food fast. There's the queen right there. We'll mark her. When we see them, we mark them. Anyway, that's, that's part of the problem with warm winters in our area. They start brooding up early. They start going through the food fast. And suddenly in mid-February, you got got a bunch of starving colonies. So get a pen. this year we will be very careful about that. Okay, we'll check this one out too. Um, these are not happy. It's about... Uh, I guess it's about 54 degrees right now and a very overcast, threatening rain. Not the ideal time for going through colonies, but and we're not going to go into every brood nest. I just want to really kind of see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. Oh that. my, look at that frame Ooh, that of brood is, already. Dude, that is a frame of brood. Yeah, they are going to burn through the food fast. So we're going to have to look at every colony, make a judgment on food. I'm just going to assume, oh look my goodness. That. It's the, uh, what's the date today? Today is December 27th. The December 27th, <laughs> yeah. This is really interesting. The other thing is that they don't have any pollen in the comb either. So, uh, hmm. we, what we might end up doing here is uh, coming back in a week or two and putting, we can, we can take advantage of this, but we just have to be careful with it. We can put some pollen patties on them we have some of that soft patty from Man Lake we can use and give them something, some nutrition that they can raise this brood with. I know we got some more warm weather coming up. But it's supposed okay. to be warm all this week. What do you mean be careful with it though? They're going to starve to death oh, if we okay. don't keep the food on them. When they start doing this in midwinter, right. uh, this colony's uh, looks like it's got four or five frames of food left, but that ain't nothing when they start doing this. Right. This colony would never make it to March. Okay. Um, would this, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a different kind of winter for us. Okay. Uh, gonna take it's going to take a lot of time, too, that we really hadn't planned on. We have a, <laughs> a lot of woodwork to do in the wood shop, and now we got to worry about yeah. doing all this bee work. That's the way it is, though. Boxes. Yeah, I think what's what's going to end up happening is a lot of these uh, singles that are under these double screen boards will get a inside feeder, a gallon and a half feeder inside, and I usually do not like to feed sugar syrup in winter. Right. I'm sure we have some cold win weather That's what coming. I'm wondering. Yeah, we got to have some cold days coming up, <laughs> and could, yeah. they won't take that syrup when it's cold. But, uh, but for the right next now, week, the next week they will. Yeah, with the rain, they'll be inside. Yeah, even though it's raining, if it's in the mid 60s, they'll they'll get on that syrup and take it up. So, yeah. John, go ahead and break out the black feeders. A lot of these are going to get a, a inside feeder. This one for sure. Everything just changed, Jesse. Okay, so I've already made sure that the basic cluster is going to be close to the feeder. That's another thing when we're using these feeders in cooler weather. We want the bees to be close to the feeder. If there's two or three empty frames between the brood and the cluster and the feeder, it'll be they'll be much less likely to use it. Is that pump on, Seth? It's coming. Yes, sir. There okay. it goes. For, <laughs> Good to reprime. This is so weird. First feeder of the season, and it's only late December. Yep. Two days after Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> just the way it is. Oh, yeah. Even the little overwintering nukes are raising brood. Okay. 
cross a laying worker here. Pretty sure it's a laying worker and not a drone laying queen because I couldn't find a queen. You can tell by this protruding brood. It looks like drone brood sticking up out of worker comb. That's a dead giveaway. So what we'll do is we'll disperse this bees, brood, and all one frame at a time. Find a decent colony and stick that frame in and then all the other two or three frames of bees here we'll do the same with and we will uh, vacate this spot and we'll take one of these overwintering nukes and put it down in this spot and they'll catch the field force from this colony coming back and uh, that should work out fine. We can keep this spot populated. Okay, okay so Seth's putting in one of those frames from that lane worker colony. Just disperse them one at a time in good colonies, no problem. Here's a pallet of double deeps. This will be a much different situation. Uh, we won't have a food problem here and that's one of the reasons I prefer double deeps. They're more forgiving when it comes to food stores and they're also more forgiving when it comes to swarming. We'll dig into this double deep. I fully expect a bunch of food in here. The nuke is small, but it'll be okay because it's above this double screen board. Yeah, that's a box full of food right there. Oh yeah, so... That's the difference between a double deep and a single when it comes to food. This thing's still got 60 or 70 pounds of food in the top box. And we will not have a problem with this colony till at least late March. All in all, a pretty good yard of bees. As expected, those double deeps right there were no problem, didn't have to do anything. Lucky for us, most of our outfit is double deeps. And we got a number of yards that are singles like this with these double screen boards and a nuke overwintering on the top. So we got some work to do. Very odd. It feels strange to be working in late December checking for food stores, but it's a must do. You know, we have something interesting. We have some very light pollen coming in in this yard. This yard's going to be much easier because we don't have any overwintered nukes on double screen boards here. All we're going to do is pop the lid and make sure they got bees and give them a jar. Seth, check this colony right here. Let's just see how they're looking. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Just put the lid back and give them a jar. We'll go through this yard really fast. John's filling up jars. Every, every colony here will get a jar. What's, uh, what you got? They brooding up here too? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah golly, I guess they are. Uh -huh. Yeah, same situation like? in this yard. These are five pound honey jars, real close to a half a gallon. John's putting two holes in each lid. It's a two penny nail. That's about right for what we're doing. We don't need the syrup to go in super fast. If we did, we'd want to put five or six holes in there. With two holes, it'll take them several days to take it down. And uh, looking at the weather forecast, it looks like we've got three or four, maybe even five warm days for them to take these jars down. It's not a lot of food, it's just a little bit of an insurance policy. This yard of bees was pretty good. There was only two or three colonies that were too small, meaning they only had two or three frames of bees. But they did have a good queen, so we boosted them with a frame of hatching brood from another colony. All in all, this yard's in pretty good shape. And again, this is more like an insurance policy. Um, these bees are all brooding up, and although they still have three, four, five frames of honey left, that's not enough to make it till March. I just want to get a little syrup in them while we can. Dirty yellow pollen? Dirty yellow pollen. Where'd you go? <laughs> little bits of pollen coming in today, it's interestingly cold. enough. It was on the legs. Now these colonies are something a little different. Uh, these were, what were these? These were nukes in late August, September. Small too. And they're small. 
Yeah, we're looking at three, maybe four frames. Yeah, there's four frames of bees, okay, at least. On this one here. Okay. Oh yeah, they're brooding up quite nicely. Yeah. That brood pattern looks really good, too. A lot of new bees, too. Yeah, they're doing it. I know they shut down. I mean, I mean, they didn't have any brood, you know, three weeks, four weeks ago. So again, we're going to have to keep this uh, yard of bees fed, keep them from starving. Now what we got going on here is just a flat bottom board, flat piece of plywood that's dipped in paraffin with some 3-8 strips and a flat uh, lid dipped in paraffin. This was some used plywood we picked up. It's good plywood. All brand new boxes. These will be really nice colonies next year. These will be some of our best colonies in the spring if we treat them right. Yep. Really? Really impressed? Nice. Yeah. He's the property owner of this place. <laughs> Put you on the spot. You're not really good. I'm filming you, Ron. Yeah, you've been a great uh, landowner, and all he wants is a little honey from time to time. I love it. Yeah. He, he, share it. he, share it. he likes the sourwood honey, and his wife likes the wildflower. Or is it reverse? You, got it reverse. Yeah. you like the wildflower, and she likes the sourwood. She likes that one. Yeah. This is a good spot. We're in Hollywood, Georgia. Uh, yes, there's a town called Hollywood in Georgia. So, thanks, Ron. <laughs> right. They're not on the same kind of these, pallets. Yeah. These, these don't are... have drain holes in the back of the bottom oh, boards, so okay. we gotta not let as much water go in. Yeah. If you if you look at them closely, they're all. Slope here, so they drain. Right. Yeah, they're all pointed down. downhill, so the rainwater runs out instead right. of in. Well, that makes sense. We walk through here at night, you know, we walk the property and uh, walk right through here. They're friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you got some brood in there, Seth. Uh, not, not big much. I bet you get surprised. And yes, he's getting stung. <laughs> <laughs> Live action, fellas. Yep. Softball size patch. There's yeah. a right there. Oh, that's why I'm getting some. She's yellow. Mm -hmm. And we mark them if we see them. <laughs> this yard's really simple. It's just got a handful of singles. I'm really not worried about the doubles. We packed the food in them back in September and October. I'm just primarily worried about these singles here. And all we really have to do is heft them. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. Doubles are in good shape. It's the singles I'm worried about. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we've found some definite trends today. As we got closer to home, in other words, further north, closer to the shop, higher elevation we found that the bees are just starting to lay a little brood some have none not even any eggs some have a little bit of little patch of larva or something like that so the farther north we go and the higher the elevation the farther the bees are behind us which is exactly what we'd expect so um, not quite the panic I thought it was going to be earlier in the day when we were down south and saw so much brood um, as we go north of the shop, up into North Carolina, I would expect, from what I've just seen in the last couple yards, I'd expect no brood up there in North Carolina. So, uh, not quite as bad as I thought, but boy, those bees that are south of the shop, they're laying a bunch of brood. They're the ones we're really going to have to uh, keep an eye on. We'll uh, fill the jars every 10 days or two weeks, make sure they don't run out of food. So, uh, I'm glad I came out to check today. It's, it's always nice to know where you stand, yes, huh, John? Yes, <laughs> yeah. for sure.